Welcome to Home and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Today's episode is such an important episode for anyone who menstruates or know of someone who does. And I feel like this topic... It's something that we don't talk about often. It almost feels taboo. And I know that things are changing compared to 10, 15 years ago. We're learning a lot more about hormones, how we're being affected by it, what happens to our bodies. And I'm so grateful for more people sharing about their experiences and raising awareness on, you know, all the endless things that can happen, affect us and how they're all interconnected. Today, my guest Sonia McGillicuddy talks about her experience connecting to her body as she recovered from postnatal depression, her experience with perimenopause, and how she's helping her clients manage and cope through perimenopause symptoms. So who is Sonia? After a successful career in the hotel industry, Sonia discovered yoga and began the journey that led her to where she is today. Three years ago, she wanted to serve more people and completed a year-long health coaching certification with IIN. While studying, she began to experience hormonal imbalances and struggle with depression, weight gain, poor sleep, and low energy. So she started researching and learning about perimenopause in order to support herself and move beyond the unpleasant symptoms. As she healed herself, she realized there is so much that we can do to support ourselves during this time. Yet, it's not something that's talked about enough, and so many women suffer in silence. Today, it is her intention to support women through her work to not only survive perimenopause, but also thrive during this time. Because changes are inevitable, but we don't have to suffer along the way. In today's episode, Sonia shares her postnatal depression that led her to slow down and reconnect to her body going through perimenopause and how it felt like going at war with her body until she surrendered, her journey becoming a health coach, reclaiming her power through food and nutrition, the early signs of perimenopause and what she's done to manage those symptoms, how to support your body through hormonal changes, and how she creates a sustainable lifestyle for herself and her clients and so much more. Come join our chat. Hi, Sonia. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. How are you? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. It's been a busy week, but it's also been a, a very fun week. So I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited for our conversation today. I met Sonia a couple of years ago in our Strala Yoga training in Amsterdam. Oh, it feels like ages ago, hey? It feels like a lifetime. I mean, so many <laughs> things happen in between, like a different lifetime. Yeah. And I think one of the things I love about social media is that you get to stay connected to each other mm-hmm. in a way to see what everybody's up to. And I know you've been through quite a journey of like self-discovery and just going through a lot of things that we go through and I'm excited to learn more about you and share your story with the audiences people listening today so a little introduction who are you Sonia how do I pronounce your <laughs> last name too <laughs> so it's McGilly Cuddy <laughs> um my husband is Irish so um yeah it's it's Shane, my, my little one, he, he, about two years ago, he said he wanted to change his surname. It was like ridiculous because he was learning how to spell and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> so he was quite cross. He's like, I want to change my surname. This is ridiculous. 
<laughs> so, um, so who am I? I'm, I'm, I am Sonia. I'm, the, I'm 37. I live in Cape Town, South Africa, and have two boys, married. Um, I was actually born here in, in South Africa, in Johannesburg. Um, my parents are German. Um, and then when I was 12, we moved to Germany. Um, and then from Germany, so we moved around a bit. And then from Germany, we moved to the U.S., um, and then I studied hotel management in the, in the U.S. and stayed there for um, a good 14, 15 years. Then I met my husband in Miami. And then we actually came on holiday to Cape Town, to South Africa. I wanted to show him where I was born. Um, and he fell in love with, with the country. And he said, I want to I want to live here. So we got back from that trip and two years later, we, we moved back. So we've been here ever since. It's been 13 years now. Um, I had both of my boys here in South Africa. And um, yeah, um, along the transition, the move, I switched gears from a hotel career um, more into, um, I discovered yoga and I did several yoga teacher trainings, um, the last of which is is Strala where I where I met you and, and that's pretty much my my practice now and, and also how I um, guide um, and then my my yoga led me into health coaching um, and then as I was studying to become a health coach I was experiencing um, uh, some hormonal changes in my mid 40s um, this is about four years ago now yeah no three years ago now and um, my experience actually became my biggest teacher. So when I first got certified, I wanted to help everyone. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't really have a niche. But then as I was studying, I was on this crazy hormonal roller coaster ride. And I thought, you know what? Um, this is actually who I want to support because then I started learning and researching and listening to podcasts. I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole uh, on how to support myself and. Um, it was quite a journey. We can talk about that. But um, as I learned from my own experiences, as I studied and researched, um, I realized this is how I can actually truly support women um, and help them to, to move through this time with, with grace and ease and joy. Because if you don't understand what you're going through, you actually feel like your body is betraying you and it can be a little bit of a negative negative space and it doesn't have to be. It's not something to, to be afraid of. It's just something to, to be prepared for. And um, there's so much that you can do to support yourself. So um, yeah, so that's me. <laughs> what a beautiful introduction. I'm curious, how was your relationship with health and wellness before? Something that I've noticed in myself is that unless I get sick, I didn't care about health and wellness and that's what drove me to holistic care was because I was getting sick all the time and I'm not saying that's how everyone is but how was your relationship to that before all the hormonal changes and finding yoga yeah I mean we all get drawn to it for for different reasons and um, mine was actually um, through postnatal depression I had um, postnatal depression uh, after both my boys but I obviously first discovered it with my first child and I only discovered it a year. Um, so, I, well, I was only diagnosed when he was one. So, so for pretty much, I was depressed for six months and, um, you know, it's another thing we don't talk about, but that's a subject for another day. Um, and, you know, I, I went on, on, um, medication and that was a lifesaver. But then I also didn't want to stay on medication. And um, that was then the catalyst for me to learn more about my body and what I could do um, from a nutrition standpoint and also from you know, an exercise standpoint um, to support myself and, and to heal. Well, not really heal, but recover from, from that deep depression. Um, so that was really the, the start of my journey. Um, and you know, there's so much conflicting information about out there about what to eat and what to exercise, and you know, vegan, paleo, carnivore, like you know, and I was so overwhelmed and confused. And 
I'm like, oh, I want to learn more. And actually, that's why I decided to go into health coaching to, to get answers for myself. Yeah, thank you for, you know, sharing that part and also saying how medication help, that was what you needed. And when you were ready, you were also looking for more alternatives because there's always a balance, right? It's not always one thing or the other. Yeah, and I think sometimes, um, you know, again, you know, some people say, oh, I'll never go on medication, but there's, you know, it's, it's a life-saving tool for, for many um, for many people, especially women. And it's the same when you go through perimenopause. But what I would caution people to consider is, um, or encourage people to consider, instead of reaching for the medication straight away and sort of just putting a Band-Aid on, on what you're experiencing, rather dig a little bit deeper and see maybe it is um, the gluten that you're eating or the dairy or the sugar or the alcohol um, maybe you're just tired and stressed and you actually need to prioritize your sleep, or maybe you just need to, to take yourself on a vacation and just leave everything and, and slow down, um, instead of just, you know, taking a medication and then carrying on as you, as you were, um, I think it's always helpful to, to dig a little bit deeper instead of just sort of pretending, you know, that everything's okay. Yeah, the band-aid approach, it happens so often, not just in the health industry with life, everybody wants to promise you results right away, but usually there's a lot of things underneath. And yeah. I'm curious when you found out about perimenopause, like what was the journey guiding you there? And did you get a band-aid approach offer? Like, was that the first solution when you were diagnosed with it? Well, it wasn't so much a band-aid, it was more resistance and frustration um, because these changes, um, so subtle shifts start to happen in your late 30s, early 40s, and you don't, you don't really notice it. Um, and then they kind of sneak up on you and then they crescendo pretty quickly. And then all of a sudden your, your quality of life is affected and you actually don't feel so great about yourself because you're going through all these things that you can't explain. Um, and then you do everything that you did in your 30s, but nothing's working. And in fact, actually, sometimes it even gets worse. So let me explain a little bit more. So what tends to happen, the first early signs, um, and you know, every woman is different, but, but this was my story. And from what I hear, a lot of women experience it this way. Um, you, your, your stress, your tolerance for stress goes down. So you feel quite overwhelmed and maybe even a little bit anxious. Um, you feel bloated all the time. Your periods become really heavy and erratic. Um, you don't sleep as well. Um, you don't tolerate caffeine really. You become quite jittery um, and even alcohol, you know, when you drink alcohol, you notice it affects your sleep. Um, and then you also start to lose, even though you're exercising, you actually start to lose muscle tone and overall strength. And, um, you know, you're just like, what is happening? <laughs> um, and if you, if you're not prepared, it's, it can be a really frustrating time. You go to war with your body. Um, you know, you exercise harder and you eat less and, um, you know, you, just really um, resist what's happening. And you feel like your body is betraying you um, because you just don't understand and nobody's told you what to expect. Um, and I was in this, in this um, spiral um, for quite a while. And um, I was pushing against all the changes and resisting. And then I read something um, that sort of hit home and it says you can't heal a body you hate. Mm. And I was like, okay, deep breath, slow down. This is what's happening. You're, you have a beautiful body. This is absolutely normal. It's beautiful. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it sucks sometimes. But it's also actually a blessing. I mean, it's a privilege to, to age, right? Um, so I slowed down. I put my weapons down. I laid my weapons down. Um, I 
called truths on my body um and then then seriously things started to shift from that space from that acceptance and that self-love um you begin to heal and you then um it's a much, much more pleasant journey and then you know you you start to change things and 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 you become much happier so i can resonate with so much of that even though you know i've had so many health imbalances throughout the years which is what drove me to holistic wellness and the only thing that help wasn't learning about more tips or tools or how to sleep better because those things are useful but it depends on where it comes from and I was yeah. coming from a place of I need to fix I need to fix all these things are wrong with me I'm not doing it right I'm not sleeping like and then it becomes all these where knowledge is power it can also be like too much it wasn't Absolutely. until I surrendered to my body and to get to that point you kind of had to like hit whatever peak or whatever you know bottom it is and it's like well it's happening anyways yeah. <laughs> how can I just surrender and come back to myself and appreciate this body and you just spoke to it so beautifully thank you yeah yeah that was really because you know it's it's not a nice place to be um and it's actually quite lonely because then you also start comparing yourself to to other women like you look at moms your your age and you're like you know she's skinny and she's running around like you know <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. like nothing's wrong and like what's wrong with me and you start you know and obviously we all know like it's not a good place you know like comparison is never a good thing and um yeah so you just have to remember that this is just a phase a transition um and it's the beginning actually of something really special um and you know at the same time as i progress in my 40s it's also a time where you start to really actually then when you accept where you are then you're just like okay screw it i don't care what anybody thinks about me and then you just really you step into your power so instead of sort of being in a victim mode, you're like, okay, this is what's happening. This is what I can do. And watch me go, watch me rise. Um, and that's much, this is sort of where I'm at right now. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm growing my business. Um, and, you know, life is busy, but I'm, I'm feeling good. Like I said, it's a roller coaster. It's not, you're not always up, but I mean, that's life in general anyway. Um, so yeah, it's a much more empowering place. And this is my message to all my clients. Instead of coming from a disempowered place where you like, oh, I don't know what's happening with me and you just give up and you're like, oh, you know, I might as well just drink champagne and eat chocolate cake every day, all day. And call um, it self-care, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah, you need it. it. Sometimes you need it. <laughs> Sometimes but. you need it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but instead of doing that and, and sort of going into that disempowered state and sort of a little bit of a victim mentality, you know, regain, like reclaim your power. Um, and I really like to put that empowered, um, that sense of empowerment back into my, my client's um, vision um, and just build them back up um, and support and guide. And, you know, so just knowing you're not alone and you're not broken. This is absolutely normal. Um, yeah how amazing to have that space to to be held during a time like this and I know during your personal journey how was it for you like what were the symptoms for you? how there's a reckoning that happens as you're navigating through that and I know we talked about this earlier but there's also a stigma about yeah. what perimenopause is can you talk to that yeah, so, you know, when you see all the symptoms that are pretty common, it's like, oh, you know, um, this is really going to suck. And a lot of women say, oh, I'm approaching menopause. My life is going to be over. Um, that's it. I'm just going to get fat and tired. And, um, and, you know, people actually don't even talk about perimenopause. It's like you go from being in your 30s and then sort of 
we hit menopause, but your main changes actually happen in, in perimenopause and we don't talk about that. Um, so what is perimenopause compared to menopause, I guess? So perimenopause is the time before menopause. And typically, I mean, for some women, it starts as early as their late thirties, but typically it starts around 42, 43, and it can go all the way to into your fifties. And then you're in menopause. So you're, it's, um, you're in after, if you haven't had a period for 12 months, that's when you're, you're in officially. menopause officially. Um, but yeah, so, so perimenopause is, is the time before that. And this, this is when all these, these shifts happen. Um, you know, you start to experience the night sweats and um, the waking up at 2 a.m. Um, so, so what happens is there's three, three main things that happen. Um, and like I said, it sort of creeps up on you, but, but all of these symptoms can really be, um, are, are caused um, by, by three main things. So the first thing that goes is, is your, your cortisol. So your cortisol is your stress hormone and that shoots up through the roof. Um, your tolerance for stress goes down. So maybe you are a working mom and you can really juggle and multitask. You'll notice that any little change in your schedule throws you off balance. You become really anxious and you just become completely overwhelmed you um, sort of have that brain fog. Um, and then the next thing that happens is your progesterone um, goes down. And progesterone is a hormone that actually supports your cortisol. So the fact that your progesterone is declining, it can't support your cortisol. And this is why your, your cortisol is going up. And with lower progesterone, um, it really affects your sleep. So progesterone is a hormone that supports our sleep as well. So then, you know, you start really getting um, not the best quality sleep. You start waking up at 2 a.m. Maybe you are experiencing some night sweats already. And then the third thing is that your estrogen levels um, really fluctuate and go up and down, up and down. Um, and this causes um, the erratic periods and the really, really heavy periods. Um, I mean, when, when I was going through this phase, I was... Um, you know, I, I put in a, a tampon and then like 20 minutes later, um, I had this, this gush of blood and like, you can't keep up and it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, and it can be so uncomfortable if you're out and about and you, you maybe say, you know, you know, you can maybe go two hours with a, with a tampon or a cup, whatever you use. Mm -hmm. Um, and then meanwhile, you know, you can't rely on that anymore. And, and, you know, now you, you have blood in your, pants and you don't know what to do so it's all of these different things that you go through and um so those are the, the three sort of main trend sort of yeah main transitions that happen I mean there's a lot of other stuff that goes on but those are the three main things that, that you know when, when you're going through this you know that that you're in perimenopause asking it because I'm like is there a way to reverse it <laughs> I feel like it's a no but I'm like I'm gonna ask it or slow well, it down or surrender <laughs> so so I you know ch these changes are inevitable no you can't change it you can't slow it down but suffering is optional well yeah yeah you know you don't necessarily have to suffer um as badly as I did because you can do so really, you know, if you start taking care of yourself now in your thirties um, and I, I can go through, you know, a few things that I, you know, yeah, the baseline of what I tell my clients and how you can support yourself. But if you start to really be aware and really treat your body well, start to cut back on, on a few things that you know aren't good for you, maybe slow down, just become really in tune with your cycle um then you'll be really aware um of, of what's happening and then you'll know okay this is this is what i can do and you can sort of step in and you're much more proactive instead of being reactive and um pushing through it and then just getting frustrated when you know things don't work work out for you so um so i would suggest really um in your mid 30s you know now Get a full hormone panel once a year. 
um, ideally when you're feeling when you're feeling good. So then as you progress, you have a baseline and you know what your optimal hormones level hormone levels are to um, when you're feeling good. So when those change then as your tests, then you know, okay, my hormones are starting to fluctuate. This is what's starting to happen. This is what I can expect. And then this is what I can do. So, um, so another, so, okay. So from a holistic standpoint, um, we don't look, just look at one thing. We look at a lot of things and, you know, it's, it's what you do for your, for your emotional body, for your spiritual body, and also for your physical body. So, um, the biggest change is really is in your, in your physical body, meaning, um, you really start to take care of your liver, um, in your early 40s, your, your liver also becomes a little sluggish and it's just wear and tear from, from alcohol, from caffeine, from medication, um, you know, just eating the wrong foods. Um, so you wanna really take care of your liver. So eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables, for example, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, drinking lots of water, making sure you're hydrated, um, sweating, you know, you know, maybe doing a sauna or, um, you know, just working out and, and just sweating at least once a day is, is good. Mm -hmm. um, and then pooping regularly. A lot of people, you know, are not pooping on a daily basis. Um, and that's so important to, to eliminate. Um, and eating sufficient fiber, we don't get enough fiber in our diet. So eating sufficient fiber, which will allow to uh, regulate your, your bowel movements is really important. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then, unfortunately, caffeine and alcohol are not our best friends. And I do a reset twice a year. It's called Revitalize. And um, we, we go through a process where we do give up. And when I say we, I, like I do it with, with a bunch of clients in a, in a group format, it's really fun and supportive. Um, but we sort of cut out, cut out alcohol and caffeine for, for four weeks and, um, it can be tough, but I think it's also some, a, an important thing to do just to bring your body back to a balanced state. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, you know, with, with all the hormones being all over the place, caffeine and alcohol are not our friends. So really eliminate, um, eliminate those not eliminate, but reduce. I don't believe I living in South Africa, you know, it's like we're, it's like Napa Valley here. I mean, we're, we have, I believe the best wines in the world at our doorstep. So I enjoy my red wine. I'm never going to give that up, but I can't drink it every night like I used to. So I'll enjoy it once a week, maybe twice a week if it's a special occasion. Um, and that's it because if I don't, I don't sleep well. And if I don't sleep well, I'm grumpy. And then if, if I'm grumpy and tired, I don't eat well. And so it's this domino effect. So you choose your heart, you know, and you just really have to take responsibility as well for your health. Um, so, you know, cut down on, on the things that you know are not serving you. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, slow down. Um, the first thing we want to do when we notice that we're gaining weight and um, uh, we want to cut our calories and, and exercise harder. Um, but that unfortunately, when you are, when you're experiencing an elevated uh, stress level, it's exactly the wrong thing to do because that will put your body into more of a stress response into that fight or flight mode. So actually what serves you better is to slow down you know, do more um, of a strala yoga practice, go for walks in nature. Um, and, you know, you don't want to be eating everything, but also just tune into what your body needs. Um, and don't necessarily cut calories, but eat more nutritious, whole plant-based foods that will, will fill you up. Um, and there's so many nourishing foods, you know, eating healthy doesn't have are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in their lives. 
so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. Eating healthy doesn't have to be boring. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know. And like, I love how you keep bringing back this important point of not going at war with ourselves, especially with these changes. And you might be feeling them or you might not be, or it might be completely, you know, not connected to perimenopause. But whenever we're feeling unwell, we want to fight it. Like, oh, we gain a little bit of weight. Let's eat less. Let's do that. And then we put ourselves on a strict regimen. And that just adds more stress to your body. And it took me a very long time because as a teenager, it was like logical. Like I did this. So therefore, I need to do less of that and less splurging, less like enjoying myself when punishing yourself doesn't take you far. It might have worked one time, but it's not sustainable. And we often forget that our bodies, even when they're sick, even when it feels like they're out of alignment, even when you're having all these imbalances, it's trying to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's, send, it's always sending you signals. And they're very, very subtle in the beginning. And then the more you ignore, the louder those little signs get. And then all of a sudden, you know, God forbid, you end up with a chronic disease or maybe even in hospital. So yeah, tune in and, um, and, and be kind. Um, doesn't mean that you have to live a boring life, but just, just take care of yourself. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the last 18 months has really shown us, you know, your health is your wealth. Um, if you, if you're healthy and happy, um, you really don't want for anything, but if you are not, then you know this yeah yeah and so. I'm curious to hear and all of these changes they don't happen overnight I think it can feel overwhelming when we hear advice from people or just from anyone's like I did all this I changed my schedule and you know understanding what works for you there's a lot of play that happens in between and as a health coach I'm, that's exactly what you do you support your clients throughout that change it's like okay these are your symptoms we can manage it, but also see what works better for you. How is it for yourself to find, you know, your balance now, your process now as you navigate and start thriving again? It's a good question. So um, what, what works for me um, is I have this, this, this baseline. So a certain routine um, that I stick to. Um, that looks like lots of healthy protein, um, healthy fats, um, mostly plant-based, um, but I have a little bit of chicken for uh, um, animal protein I find my body needs right now. Um, like I said, alcohol, um, you know, somebody said to me, and I thought this was actually quite good, consider alcohol as you would eating birthday cake. Like you don't eat birthday cake every day. You eat it on a special occasion and then you really enjoy it. Alcohol can be like that if, if you do enjoy alcohol. It doesn't have to, you know, it can't be something every day. It's actually not healthy at all. Um, so, you know, enjoying alcohol um, in moderation, you know, on special occasions. With coffee, I've switched to decaf and sometimes even just, you know, herbal teas, but I do love a good cup of coffee. Um, and then also just listening to my body um, just being in touch with, with your cycle. If you are still menstruating, really being in tune with, with each part of, of your, of your, um, menstruation, your, your, your cycle, um, and sleeping well, you know, um, I've become very selfish with my sleep. Like even on, in school holidays, my boy sometimes will stay up until 8.30, 9 o'clock, but I'm in bed by nine. And I'm like, <laughs> you can put yourself to bed. I'm going to bed. And I just, I, you know, I become, <laughs> um, yeah. sleep is super Protective. important. I don't, that's selfish. That's just more like, this is what I need yeah. to function and yeah. feel good. How did you get in tune with your body and start listening to it? I know there are so many practices out there, but. Yeah, curious to hear about yours. Gosh, um, 
it's from really being aware of what doesn't work. And, you know, you can turn your head away from it and you can deny it and but it'll always be there. It'll always catch up with you. So then, um, and I think deep down, we all know what our body needs. It might not always be convenient or the fun thing to do, but I think deep down, we all sort of know what feels good. Like, you know, when we eat that beautiful, nourishing um, Buddha bowl of quinoa and yummy veg and, you know, instead of eating like a burger and fries, like, I mean, you know, the food, not that a burger and fries is bad every now and then, but it just makes you feel different. And so you just tune in to what makes you feel good. Um, and then I think, you know, yoga and meditation is a huge part of it. I don't think you can practice yoga um, and not be in tune with your body. Um, I mean, I think that's a huge part of it for me. Um, just slowing down and actually, you know, having the opportunity to, to tune in and to see what's going on. Um, I think that's so valuable. And you only get that really, I think, on your yoga mat or in meditation, really. Yeah, Wouldn't you agree? Really, yeah, yeah. Like definitely connecting to that part and even listening. To, like you said, sometimes you don't agree or you don't want to hear what it's telling you yeah. <laughs> which is like yeah. oh like I would love to eat a bag of Doritos right now but then I know my body is not going to to respond to that I'm gonna like yeah. pit bulls break I'm not gonna see properly but again balance of what you need and also creating that space to to connect with it and I think there's so many ways I love that you mentioned movement as well because mm -hmm. sometimes people go for a run and they feel so connected that doesn't mm -hmm. work for me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, everything hurts. My body cannot run all the time. Once in a while, I will run and feel great. But that's, you know, and then really finding that thing or maybe open to change because we're talking about how your body is changing, right? Yeah. And that is, it feels so destabilizing, especially when you, maybe you did all this inner work and self-care and then none of that is working anymore. Yeah, that's, that's what happened to me. And you you don't know where to begin. And actually the best thing is to not do anything at all. Just, you know, we also in this culture, like if we don't work out, you know, we're like, you feel guilty, you know, like there's this, this constant pressure to perform, you yes. know, um, to like not be the perfect human to do the healthy yeah. things. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, yes. Just slow down. You know, um, I think, you know, I think you can't, I don't know what the phrase is, but you can't, I don't know, outrun out a bad diet or I don't know if you've heard that, but basically your, your food, the way you, you nourish yourself is so much more important than actually, I, I mean, exercise and movement is super important, um, but I think a healthy diet is, is number one and then sort of movement is, is number two. Um, I mean, both are super important, but I guess my point is um, you can't just focus on the exercise, you know, it, it's, yeah. both is, is very important. And actually, um, as you progress in your forties, your, also your muscle mass starts to decline. So it's actually super important to start doing a little bit of weight training and I used to hate weight training I hated the gym you know weights and the, it was so <laughs> masculine it wasn't my space at all but I started to work with a trainer twice a week um, for 45 minutes and she makes it really fun and now I can actually do you know five proper push-ups and I just it feels so empowering um, and it's it's such a great feeling and you just again it's just that mental shift you just change the way you think about things um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not about being skinny and, and fitting into some clothing, but it's about feeling strong um, and just feeling, you know, good about yourself. So um, I, that's another thing I would recommend um, for women to start in their 40s is, is some, some weight training. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Once a week is fine too. Um, and I would suggest if it's not your thing, try a trainer, maybe maybe with a girlfriend, maybe do it in a, in a small group that could, that could be 
positive too. So yeah, yeah, find a way to have fun and enjoy it. That's so so important with whatever that we set out to do. And I specifically love the part when you said sometimes there's nothing to do. And yeah. that part, it's like in so many of my healing journeys, I struggle because I thought maybe because I didn't do X, Y, and Z, that's what led me to being sick. Maybe I didn't do enough yoga. I didn't do, and then my relationship with like health and movement has completely be like revamped from like the inside out. Like logically I understood, but until I lived and embody it and realized I am at a point where I was so exhausted, so sick and had so many symptoms, I couldn't move. And the idea of movement or even being able to cook my own food, I didn't have the ability to do it. And I just really had to surrender. And like, what is one thing I could do right now? I could meditate. I'm like, oh, I'll try it. And then I was like, okay, that feels a little bit better. And then you start with that one thing and then eventually you build onto it where you have maybe more movement and be, you're more mindful with the food that you're eating. But sometimes the more we try to control, the less we can. And, you know, surrender keeps coming up in our conversation, right? Like this is the change in mindset where it's such a subtle shift, but it actually changes your approach in everything. Yeah. How did you get to your mindset shift? Or how is your journey that was leading up to that? What did you struggle with before you realized, huh? Well, it was it's just that, um, you know, when I realized that I was trying so hard to control and to do what, what I did before and nothing was working. Um, and then, you know, you know, reading that, that quote that said, you can't heal a body you hate, that really sort of changed things. And I realized, okay, I'm just, you know, resisting this and I'm pushing and pushing and pushing, nothing's changing. So, you know, I need to, to change the way I am approaching this. And I think that was, that was a big shift in my, in my mindset. For sure. That's amazing. Yeah. What are some of the things your clients come to you for at the beginning? What do you, how do you support them? during this process well also in this process you know it's it's not a, a quick fix right a, a lot of people are also you know they want to go on a diet for four weeks and expect all these these changes but um you know it actually so my intention is i work with my, my with my clients and then we create a sustainable lifestyle i want to move away from this diet culture where you feel like you know Monday through Friday you're eating well and you're being good and then Friday Saturday you're cheating you know like it doesn't make any sense and it's not healthy um it adds so much food drama and unhealthy habits so we go through it's a three-month program that I guide my clients through and we we go through Every month has a different um, phase to it. And then at the end of it, you know, we've created this sustainable plan that includes all the fun stuff, but that leaves you balanced um, and not feeling deprived, feeling energized and again, empowered to make the right food choices and just to know how to support yourself. So a lot of women, um, many of my clients right now are, are women Whew, that are just overwhelmed. And I think the last 18 months has really added to, to all of this. They just say, I don't have time to think about what I, what I can cook or um, they're, they're, they're overwhelmed, they're tired. Um, you know, again, they're, they're struggling with, with physical symptoms, but it's also a lot of emotional. So a lot of the work I do is also about self-care. Um, and again, that's, like you said, it's not, you know, um, chocolate cake and champagne it's it's more uh, or or bubble bath actually you know it's it's more of putting up boundaries and not feeling guilty about taking time for you um the stupid mom guilt um for any of your listeners out there that are moms um or dads you know it's it's but it's you know mom guilt like you you feel guilty when you take time for you and that needs to stop um, 
it just needs to come from a place of, of taking care of you, making yourself a priority um, and honoring what, whatever it is that you need and not being, you know, not feeling bad for, for doing that. Um, so, and a lot of, one of my clients, um, I just finished with her actually, she's, she's a GP, a general practitioner. She's a doctor and she says, I should know how to take care of myself. And, you know, but I can't, I, I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong. But the thing is, she's giving, she's giving to her family, she's giving to her patients, but she's not giving herself anything. So if you keep doing that, you're going to come to a place of stress and overwhelm. And then you don't even know how to take care of yourself anymore. And mm -hmm. another client I'm working with, she's a general manager of a hotel, same thing. You know, she has a family at home, but I know from the hotel industry, all her, all her staff in the hotel, it's like your family too. So she's taking care of everybody and the guests. There's not enough time. So you really need to be proactive about your self-care, about taking care of your, of you. Um, and yeah, oh, so a, a lot awesome. of, yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk to you like the mom guilt and the way society and the expectations that are attached that you are supposed mm -hmm. yeah, super mom, it's crazy. You're amazing. Yeah. But the expectation yeah. that through shine or rain or shine, the expression, even when you're sick, even when you're exhausted, you still have to take care of your family. It doesn't make you any less. In fact, it teaches. I mean, easier said than done. I'm not a mother yet, but I, I've seen so many people I love that even my own mom, I'm like, why are you working when you're sick? She's like, well, because yeah. I have the energy. I'm like, I know you rather be in bed, but you take so much pride in being able to take care of us when you're sick. But that is so unhealthy because I adopted that mindset in the way I show up to work. I yeah. adopted that I'm not good enough if I cannot show up. And that was yeah. not her intention. She did it out of love. She wanted to yeah. keep supporting us, but she wasn't filling her cup. And I yeah. thought, this is this is the proper way to show up, you know, fill yeah. up everyone's cup. Let's be the nice person. Let's take care of everyone's needs and deny my own. And oh, I love it's that you a, bring this up. Yeah. yeah, you know, we do that as women. Have you read the book Untamed? <gasps> It's in my list by Glennon um, Doyle. Glennon Doyle. So yeah. she reframed it beautifully. She said, how about instead of feeling guilty about taking care of ourselves, we model to our children what it means to take care of ourselves and give them permission to do the same. So instead of like your mom, you know, taking pride and pushing through and showing her kids she's strong and not wanting to disappoint. How about if she had modeled to you saying, okay, I'm sick. It's okay. I'm going to, you know, and that would have changed the way you look at things as well. And I mean, that was, that was a big aha moment for me. And she's, she's so right. Like we're, you know, we, we, like they say on an airplane, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first. Um, yeah. And then you will give your children the permission. Also, I see a lot of moms these days over scheduling their children. And, you know, sometimes my, like, you know, if they said, mom, I'm tired, I don't wanna go to this party or I don't wanna do tennis today, it's okay, then rest. You know, you don't have to push, 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 push and have thousands of things going on all the time. I mean, that's another thing, also another topic for another day, but I believe so many kids are overscheduled these days. Um, parents just, I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know. You know, I, I, um, I believe in, in less is more. And as long as, as your child is happy and fulfilled, um, that's the most important thing. And it, it has to come from them. It doesn't, ha it shouldn't come from a space of them trying to fulfill our dreams and wishes. Yeah. And I understand it comes from a place of like, oh, we want you to succeed. But I've seen a pattern with like my friend's parents where they were like, schedule every time of their day were scheduled as a kid. Yeah. And obviously they rebelled when they grew older. They did whatever they wanted because they never had that freedom. Mm -hmm. And even though your intention was to provide for them, sometimes you can take away because 
one thing I know from children that I've, you know, any, my friends, kids that I engage with, they are so in tune with their needs. And when they say no to me, or even yes, I'm like, I love it because I'm learning from you as someone who is like really relearning about boundaries and really taking care of myself in that sense. Like, no, I don't want to eat this. No, like obviously there are times that you're concerned, but you can work with them, right? They have so much, they are so in sync until we grow up and we start, you know, coping and like numbing whatever our body is telling us to fit in society. But then sometimes you know, the voice is there. The voice is always there. Yeah. My little one, you know, he taught me a good lesson. Like he said, mom, I'm just not hungry now. I'm like, well, it's dinner time. I was like, well, I'm not hungry. (laughs) And I'm like, actually, that's okay. (laughs) Just because it's dinner time. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like such a simple thing. Yeah. It took me a while. Like I, don't have to like I can listen to my body and I will eat when I'm hungry (laughs) yeah 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 so that that was also quite interesting yeah you you do you you learn from them if if you're open to it you know if you don't want to push your your agenda um but yeah so just really normalizing a slower paced life and taking care of yourself and um just enjoying being more present, (sighs) you know? um, And a lot of things that women go through in their forties, I think is an accumulation of the rushing women's syndrome. Oh, you know, just on this hamster wheel. And then all of a sudden, you know, your your hormones start to change, but you're still going and going and going. And then all of a sudden, you know, smacks you and you're like, oh, okay, what happened? And it throws you off balance and um, then it's almost too late. You know, then you have to backpedal to, to get more into a balanced state again. So, yeah. And the extraordinary thing is that sometimes your body doesn't need that much to recover. Like sometimes oh, your body is amazing. Breaks. Yeah. Sometimes it can mm-hmm. bounce back easier. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's just it needs as long as it needs, but it will work with you if you listen. Yes, yes, yes. It's very forgiving. It really is. Yeah. Thank you so and much, Sonia. Oh gosh, it's been such a pleasure. Just first of all, reconnecting with you, but even talking about this, you know, I'm so passionate um, about women's health and also just about, almost makes me a little emotional, but just, um, supporting women supporting each other and you know um not judging and not coming from a place of fear but rather from a place of sort of love and um yeah support um it's it's just such a beautiful thing to connect with like-minded souls i I, you know i I love that so thank you so much it's been such a pleasure just to catch up and talk about yes talk about these things (laughs) easy peasy how to take care of ourselves (laughs) not really (laughs) oh but i you know i still have some rapid fire questions okay cool are you you ready ready for them (laughs) yeah i'm ready what is the best compliment you've ever received oh that's a great question uh, it actually happened a couple of nights ago. I have to say, my my nine my nine year old Luca, he said to me, "Mom, you're like my superhero. You you know exactly what's what I need when I need it." And that was like that was that was super cool. Yeah, a book <laughs> that that's changed good. your life. A book? Oh, Untamed. Highly recommend. <laughs> um, what does coming home mean to you? Hmm. Okay. Getting into bed, <laughs> um, and then more on a on a spiritual spiritual level. Um, every time I step onto my yoga mat and also do a meditation practice, I sort of have the sense of coming home into back into my body. What would you like more of? Travel, yoga trainings. Strala. 
Tara Styles. <laughs> All those Shout things. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, any advice or words for your younger self? <sighs> um, your your mistakes don't define you. Finally, where can people find you? I know you have a lo your lovely business. We didn't even talk about the name Soul Space Body. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you wanna, uh, do a little blurb. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I. Uh, long story. I'll, I'll summarize it. So I went um, on a yoga retreat to India um, about six, seven years ago, and that was my first time away from the kids on my own. And it was like a rebirth for me. I mean, not having to plan any meals and nobody wanting anything from me for two whole weeks was amazing. So I came back to Cape Town and I said, I want to recreate this for, for women in my community and where they actually, because here in Cape Town, I mean, we have so, so many beautiful things right on our doorstep. You don't have to necessarily travel to India. So I created Soul Space Retreats, Soul reconnecting with your soul space, allowing your, yourself space physically and, and mentally, and then retreats. Um, so I still do yoga retreats. I host yoga retreats here in, in, in South Africa. And then, you know, I progressed through health coaching and I wanted to keep the soul space. And then that's when I added body. So that became soul space body. Um, so I'm on Instagram. That's my favorite playground. Um, I'm pretty active on there. And then um, I have a, a bi-weekly newsletter. Um, you can sign up for that in my um, in Instagram, in my link tree, in my bio. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's, um, I'm, I'm revamping my website. So I'm hesitant to guide people towards my, my website, but I mean, it's there and you can have a look at soulspacebody.com, but um, it's it's in the process of being updated and revamped, um, which is exciting. Fun, fun, and I know you also have an offer, a program. That's yeah. Up. Can you share a little bit about that as well? So my ongoing program is um, a three month program. Um, if you want to find out about that, you can book a discovery session with me. It's free, and then we can just talk about what your needs are and how I can support you. Um, and it's a, it's a journey. We start out, you know, focusing on nutrition, self-care. And then the third month is again, creating that sustainable, almost like a blueprint for you, um, which helps, makes you thrive, not only survive, but enjoy your life and thrive. Um, so that's a, that's a beautiful journey. I'd love doing that. And then um, twice a year, I host something called Revitalize. It's happening on January 17th. I'm just finalizing the details. I haven't sent it out yet, but um, it's a four week reset and it's, it's not a diet. Um, yes, we will be eliminating certain foods, but we're not counting calories. It is, I take an approach from, from a hormonal um, perspective. So we, we balance your hormones. Um, I talk a lot about how to manage um, symptoms and, and, you know, things you experience. So it, it's very much geared to, my my niche my my clients which are women in their 40s um and it, it's fun um you feel amazing afterwards and i do it in a group format so you have support we keep it light and we share recipes and um yeah it's it's uh, and it happens you know we go back to school um sort of mid-january so after the holidays and everyone's stressed and overwhelmed and you know <laughs> I personally love to just get back into a routine and really focus on my self-care and really nourishing myself. And that's what it's all about. It's just about placing more um, focus on you and your well-being. So that's happening uh, in January again. In January, revitalize. Yeah. I yeah. love it. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Coming yeah. off all the new year, like excitement. Yeah. It's like, okay, now how do I come back to myself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's not only about food, you know, it's, 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 um, a whole, it's holistic. It's the whole approach. So. Oh, that sounds super fun. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing your experience, your tips on how to like reconnect to ourselves. Do you have any final words you would like to share? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, as you progress through this beautiful phase of your life, um, really see this stage, this time in your 40s as a transition to this next chapter of your life. And you're just going to, to rise and go from strength to strength. And um, just, it's like you're, you're blossoming. You're not, um, it's, it's not the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's the beginning of a beautiful new phase. And just tune into that. Tune into that empowerment, tune into the beauty of your body, of your change. Yes, it's a changing body, but still, I mean, it's, I mean, our female bodies are miraculous. And, um, you know, we just need to support it, honor it, be proud of it. And uh, yeah, just dream big and, and keep going. Don't care about what anybody else thinks. Just live your life. Final words. Amen. <laughs> <Hey>, mic drop. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.